And good morning, and welcome to St. Patrick's. Let us now begin our liturgy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries, our readings speak of who Jesus is. And so this morning in our own lives, who is Jesus for us? How do we see Jesus? Do we own him with our own? Or are we detoured on the journey? And now for the times that we have not acknowledged the Lord as we should, and for our sins, we ask the Lord now for pardon and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks, for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, Peace to people of good will. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the workings of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, that I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the He has heard my voice in supplication. 
Shalom because he has inclined his ear to me the day I called. The cords of death encompassed me. The snares of the netherworld seized upon me. I fell into distress and sorrow, and I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and just. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low, and he saved me. For he has freed my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister has nothing to wear and has no food for that day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well. But you do not give them the necessities of the body. What good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples set out for the village of Caesarea Philippi, and along the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and raised on the thir after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and said, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summons the crowd with the disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning, as we take a moment to look at our readings, Lawrence Kohlberg did some work in the field of moral development. What's the process of how people choose? There are six stages that we process through, and not necessarily they're, they're age related. We go through them in a moral maturing process. What moves us from one stage to the next? What gets us in life to see things differently or to choose for different reasons? We call that a crisis of vision. 
You can no longer see things the same way, and as a result, you choose differently. A crisis of vision happens at some turning point in people's lives. For, for example, birth of a child, marriage, new job, death of a loved one. In the gospel now, we have a similar moment in the life of Jesus. It's a turning point, and it challenges us maybe to a crisis of vision, to how we see him. They saw him as a healer. There's a beginning to see him, they're beginning to see him in a certain way, and he wants to move them to change their vision, to see him more broadly. The turning point might also be for Jesus himself. The scholars have debated for years as to when did Jesus understand what his mission was and who he was. Did Jesus know from birth that he was the Messiah? Or was it something that he came to understand over time? Did the disciples understand who he was as a savior? Or was it something that came over time? It was a turning point. Jesus says, stop seeing me as a fixer. Who do people say that I am? The disciples respond. Some are saying John the Baptist, other Elijah, others one of the prophets. No one is on the spot. Then boom, he says, but who do you say that I am? Now they're all on the spot. Peter has moved. He, is, he has a turning point. Peter no longer sees Jesus as a healer anymore. Peter says, you are the Christ, and he owns it. He, so he's going public with it now. At some point, I got to stand up and say, this is who I am. And don't be detoured. Don't let anybody put you in another direction. You know who you are. You know your mission. You know what you are called to, do, to be. Don't just get sidetracked. Peter has this turning point, in, turn, turning point moment when he, gets, when, he get, when he gets who Jesus is. Jesus begins to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and to be killed and raised after three days. Peter takes him to a side and begins to rebuke him. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. I am not going to be detained. I don't care how close you are to me. I'm not going to be detained. Can you imagine your best friend saying that to you? Don't be detoured. The turning point for us, who do we say that I, he, that I am? We got to have a crisis of vision. We must stop seeing Jesus as a big fixer. We got to be willing to get engaged with him in a relationship as savior. Do we own our faith? People start telling me how long they grew up, how they grew up Catholic. They talk about an experience from 10 years ago instead of telling of their experience right now. Maybe they've not yet come to a crisis of vision yet. We got to get beyond I'm a Catholic because my parents were Catholic. I'm Catholic because I want to be. I went to a Catholic school. We got to get beyond the point when we say I own my faith. I'm a Catholic because I believe these things. They are tough to believe and I have to work at them. Pope Francis asked, are there moments when you place yourself quietly in the Lord's presence and when you calmly spend time with him and you look at his gaze? He also reminds us that we can encounter Christ through prayerful reading of the Bible in which we allow God's word to enlighten and renew us. Lastly, don't be detoured from living your faith out. Someone like Jesus, when it comes from a friend who will try to detour you, there are people and experiences out there and events that will try to sidestep you from loving the mission of what it means to be a faith-filled person. The detours are still out there. Name them, know them, and distance yourself because they're dragging you down. Turning point, who do you say that I am? Own it, go public, and don't be detoured.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Taking up the cross, we turn to God with our prayers and petitions. That Christians may sit patiently with those who are negotiating whether to carry the cross. We pray to the Lord. That laws created by legislators may be just and might not necessarily place undue burdens on people, especially the poor. We pray to the Lord. That doctors and nurses may listen carefully to their patients and not create rush solutions to their problems. We pray to the Lord. To those who have laid down their cross, that they may not be afraid to pick it up again. We pray to the Lord. That our beloved dead who have fallen asleep in Jesus Christ, that they may share in his glorious resurrection. We pray to the Lord. That God will hear the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father of mercy, you love the world with abundance, abundant care. Your son mandates that the cross is the way to, to life with you. May we pick it up with great hope this day and never seek shortcuts that would bypass the transformation lessons of obedience and sacrificial love through Christ our Lord. We acclaim the cross of Jesus as we see it raised on high. We proclaim the sacred standard on its one he came to die. We acknowledge Christ the victim and blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we, wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. My dear friends, let us still continue to pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, and that what they profess with, devout, with devotion and faith may be theirs, through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you, and lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and to praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other some sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Jesus Christ. Of life, fill us with your love. Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, fill us with your peace. Thankfully, here we bring simple bread and wine. Again, this morning, our second collection is going to help us defray some of our costs to keeping things up. As I said last week, we're still working on trying to find somebody to deliver dirt, and we're also trying to find a contractor that would be willing to change out the sidewalk for us. So those are the two main projects that we have, and Isaac has promised to come back to put the yellow lines on the steps so that nobody will fall and everybody can kind of see where they're going on the steps. And also we're working on getting our new phone system in and hopefully that should be in within the next couple of weeks. May the workings of, our, of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effect and not on our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace. God's blessing sends us forth, strengthened for our task on earth, refreshed in soul and renewed in mind. May God with us remain through us the Spirit. Christ be known to you.